Scott Orton, CEO of Owl Cyber Defense. Uh, you're telling me about a term called AI containment. What does that term mean to you, Scott? Well, first of all, I'd like to just define the AI we're speaking to. Uh, there's a lot of consumer AI or workflow automation that's going on really starting to talk about the AI that is going to recursively improve itself without some human intervention involved. Within that, we have a probabilistic system. It's going to give us probabilistic outcomes that we want. You know, a cure for cancer is a great example of that. But we work in a legal framework that is deterministic. Uh, our medical industries, our finance industries, our, our defense posture relies upon known outcomes to a given input. And so what we're talking about with AI containment is having that deterministic framework around the AI probabilistic outcomes such that we can apply the same kind of certification methods we might apply in cybersecurity to those outputs from the AI system while still preserving all the benefits of that probabilistic AI system. Does the cybersecurity certification framework work for this type of, uh, of application too? What's interesting about this is really any framework would work. So if it could be in the medical industry, HIPAA compliance, where we're looking at outputs in a container might say, hey, that looks to be a violation of a HIPAA uh, rule. In the case of defense, there might be geographic boundaries where an output gives us, and we say, that's not a geographic boundary that's within the legal tenants. Uh, my first job out of school was actually working in the Pentagon. And I think one of the things that maybe private industry isn't as attuned to in public industry or in public is that there's a lot of rules to be aware of in any role within the federal government. There's laws, appropriations have additional laws within them every single year. There's guidelines, there's your commander, there's your branch chief, there's your directives. And being able to understand all of those parameters is really, really challenging. So if you could take those and make those into a rule set, now you have an AI companion that's helping you in your workflow automation, but a way to ensure that it doesn't go out of bounds. You used a term a moment ago that I think makes some people skittish, and that is AI improving itself. What's the state of the art when it comes to that? And what might be able to uh, be done to make people less skittish about that concept? Hmm. Well, I that is the frontier of AI. I, I think a lot of what we're talking about in AI today is truly automation. When we talk about even how the Defense Department of War is using uh, AI today is for automating workflows. They are testing inputs, getting known outputs. That's not artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is when you get that probabilistic output. And we want to preserve that. Um, so I just think that's where the technology is going. What are the biggest obstacles that you see to success in AI containment? Hmm. Uh, really a way to frame it and who is going to implement it and pay for it mm. uh, in some way. How, how do those frameworks get set by uh, and who sets them? Um, I, there's a lot of uh, activity in things like AI safety. Uh, people are coming up with ethics and other systems to control the AI. What we're saying with containers is a little bit different in that we want to ensure that the control system does not impinge on the AI itself. We want the AI to be pure, to come up with that cure for cancer for us. Similarly, we don't want the, the AI system to be able to impinge on the control system because then it's a bad control system. Mm -hmm. But then the control system, we want to be provable, to go back. Uh, currently, I work in the cross-domain industry. We have some very rigorous requirements and a really rigorous testing regime. Well, those should still be in place because they're important to ensure that we get what we want. But we also want to grab all those benefits that come along with AI. And so thinking of this as a container where the AI is not able to know about that control system, we think is very important. A little less than a minute. Um, how will one gauge success as someone undertakes doing the things that you talked about? How will you know along the way that you're on the right track? I think if we get to a point where people are able to really harness the power of AI to come up with those new novel strategies and ideas that are capable of, of a system that has so much knowledge and is strategically superior to us in so many ways, but being able to get all that value, but still comply with our legal frameworks, financial frameworks, medical frameworks, so that we, we have confidence in the use of the AI. 
Scott, it's great to have you here. Thanks for joining me today.